sometimes the implants are needed for a certain amount of time and they can be removed. Other times we need new devices and I call it technology. It's light technology and those things can be integrated into our energy field to help us manage and navigate the energies that are coming through. Welcome to Activations with JJ. In today's episode, I'll be updating you on a lot of timeline collapsing that's happening at this point, as well as some information around the ascension symptoms that so many of us have been experiencing. I'm excited to get into these topics with you, so let's get going. Greetings, my friends. I feel like this is a wonderful time to do a mini energy update. It's so funny because I realized a couple of days ago that time is moving so rapidly. We are literally quantum shifting and quantum leaping and that a monthly energy update is not enough (laughs) to keep us updated on what's going on. So I think I'm going to shift somehow like I'm I'm, I've been doing these like little mid-month energy updates and now I might actually make it official but I'm really, really excited to have you here. If you are new or whether you've been with me for a really, really long time, just thrilled to have you co-creating. I can feel your beautiful hearts and your beautiful souls radiating through the energetic wavelengths that are coming through. And it's just, it's always fun to sit in this energy. I'm all by myself in my recording studio, but again, I can feel you here. I can feel your presence and the way that you are contributing and lifting up all of the collective through everything that you do every single day. Don't you forget that. You are making a difference just by being on this planet. So that being said, I'm going to share with you a few personal stories, (laughs) a few things that have been happening for me, and some are very, very interesting. So I've been talking about this for a little bit. I've moved recently to a new home and it's always very fascinating to move to a new home there's a lot of manifesting or if you want to call that word manifesting of of your reality when you move and in fact I was just reading in the family of light by Barbara Marciniak that's a great book by the way you can check out the link below if you're interested in taking a look at it but I was just reading something about the fact that we are we will be moving a lot a lot of us are going to be called to move frequently to different locations. I know personally, because I'm so involved in planetary grid work, that that's part of the reason. It has to do with planetary grid work. And we are being called to connect with different soul family members, depending on where we move. You don't know who you're going to come in contact to if you feel called to move somewhere. It's not just about the land. It's about the people that are there and whether they are quote unquote awake to all of this or they're just living their everyday lives you are making a difference. Like I said at the beginning, you're making a difference. So that being said, I almost feel like I should write a book because I have moved so many times in my life. I have definitely not stayed in one place for too long, even as a child. And in in my married years, so my husband and I have been married for over 25 years, we have moved, I would say, I haven't actually counted before I did this podcast, I would say around 20 times. And all of those times have been with children. Moving with children is like a whole other thing. As you can imagine, I am not a hoarder. I do not have a lot of stuff. I have frequently purge and donate my my things when I'm done with them. And for that reason, it's a little bit easier because some of you are probably like, how in the world do you do that? I do. I purge all the time. I get rid of the clothes and I donate the things the kids have. I teach them that. I still have some kids that struggle with, with hoarding. They like to collect a lot of things. But this last move, I've, I'm in a different place than I was even two years ago. We moved and I'm in a different place from then. And I learned so much about manifesting and basically essentially creating your reality and speaking your reality into existence, which is something we're talking about in my summer sacred initiation journey, which which starts at the end of this week. Or actually, the temple doors are open until the 24th of June. It's an incredible container. It is a sovereign container, which is completely different. Even though every container I have does facilitate and support your sovereignty, this one is like to the max, my most advanced container. 
I've actually transitioned away from one-on-one mentorship for now. You will notice it's not an offering anymore on my website because I feel so strongly about the power of this sacred initiation container. So anybody who wants to do mentorship with me, I will guide straight to this container. That is where you are going to really maximize your investment in yourself is through, it's a group, it's a very, it's a group experience with some one-on-ones built in and it's co-created by myself and my friend Anna who are holding these codes of sovereignty in our own frequency. We were actually guided to go through them. We had to receive the activations and go through the initiations, obviously, before we could provide it for anybody else. And it's really about you being mentored by your higher self. And so that being said, one of the things we're touching on in this upcoming cohort, which we've never done before, is the idea of speaking your reality into existence and your prophecies into existence. It's about your throat chakra, your voice. It's also about your crown, your third eye, and your heart, but it's all of those four chakras. And I keep thinking of that. I was like, how we did this when we moved, like we just declared it. And I'm not saying they weren't there weren't hard times. I'm absolutely not saying that. Right after we moved, and that's a whole story in and of itself of how we moved. I actually talked about it in my Starseed Gridwork community, June Live Energy Update, where I brought in a specialist in astral cartography, which is an amazing and very fascinating subject. But what I talked about was a friend of ours had recommended we look into a certain area, a certain neighborhood to move into that had never, ever called to me before. I'd actually never been there. Well, I'd been there one time, but I really didn't remember that. And she was like, you guys should look into this place. It feels like it would be a good fit for your family. So we had been looking in a completely opposite area, like totally different direction. And I thought, well, maybe we should just take a look. So we started looking and we were like, yeah, this feels good. Well, long story short, after we had secured our home and finalized all the paperwork, we looked in our astro cartography and found out that both myself and my husband have very powerful lines that are extremely close to this location. So that's like a huge experience we had. And if you haven't taken a look at astro cartography or what it is or what it does, my friend Ellie does provide sessions. I've included a link below for her um, information and you can check in with her about that because it's it's a great modality to understand and approach, I guess you could say an approach to life. But anyway, so we moved and after all these incredible experiences of manifesting our house, which is like on a portal and on a dragon portal, which is a whole other story. There's so many whole other stories I could go into. <laughs> I just don't have time for that today. I felt, as anybody who moves probably can understand, like I was very much in limbo. And what happened the first week, well, the first few days after I got here into this new home is I tried to sit down and record a podcast and I could not get it right. Like I recorded one and I just didn't feel like it was working. So then I recorded another one and I still didn't feel like it was working. So those two I scrapped. I didn't even decide to publish them. And I told my team, I was like, I am needing to just be in a moment of rest and and going within which all of you understand that's technically quote unquote one of the phases of of you know ascension is we go in we go out we contract we expand so this moment of contraction felt a little awkward and i also felt super wiped out energetically i felt very exhausted i asked my friend audrey who is supporting our star seek breadwork community and she is one of the co-channelers in our nexus uh, grid work training I asked her, I said, like, what is the deal? Like so many people were feeling extremely, extremely exhausted a few days ago. And I know it had to do with the solar codes, but it also had to do with the divine feminine that was vibrating at a certain frequency, being able to transmute for Gaia certain energies. And because there were, there's a smaller percentage of those women who are those feminine it doesn't actually have to be women but those processing this divine feminine energy at a certain uh frequency it it, there was kind of a lot so i want to remind you too in a sovereign way how to process ascension symptoms is just to ask your guides listen this is very intense and it's difficult for me to cope with my day-to-day life i need 
brought in any help possible to uh, calibrate and to sort of moderate these symptoms. One of the things that I've done is just ask them in dream time, can you please bring me any technologies, any devices that would support my body? I have a lot of energetic devices and I don't even like using the word implants because I know a lot of people have a lot of programming around that word because all we obsess about is getting implants removed and we forget that implants can be helpful. I started teaching that a couple years ago when I was working with other light workers and I was mentoring them and it came to me, my guide said, will you please tell them that when they see an implant to not just immediately react by removing it, it could actually be helping the person. Sometimes the implants are needed for a certain amount of time and they can be removed. Other times we need new devices and I call it technology. It's light technology and those things can be integrated into our energy field to help us manage and navigate the energies that are coming through. Okay, there's lots of help out there. We forget what's out there and we need to use our free will and give consent, but I would definitely build a relationship with any of your guides who are galactic. They tend to have that advanced technology, Arcturians, Pleiadians, Andromedans. Essentially, some of them are our future selves if you want to look at it in a linear way. They're more evolved and their technology is evolved to the point it can provide us a lot of comfort in our bodies. Another guide who could come through to help you with those ascension symptoms is Toth, Thoth, lots of people say his name all kinds of ways. Jehuti is how I prefer to say it. And he um, incarnated on the planet, but he, he had mastered the art of just being able to perpetuate like eternal youth, that fountain of eternal youth, and to regenerate. So bringing those guides in to help support you when you're going through times like that. What I noticed about my personal experience was part of it was a lesson for me it's time to turn off the business piece for a few days. Nothing bad is going to happen because I sometimes my business is like one of my babies, right? And I love to care for it. And, and I don't, it's not a baby though. Like I don't need to change its diaper every day. And so I am learning and deprogramming from some of the less aligned masculine approaches to business that it's possible for your business to flourish when you take and rest. It's funny because about three years ago when my business really started taking off, I had the funniest thing happen. I noticed whenever I went on vacation, people would book sessions. I would always have these notifications pop up. Oh, you got a session booked, a session got booked, a session got booked. And it was like, what? It just felt like that relaxing of my energy and that surrender invited in more business, an increase in the business. So that was really interesting. So that being said, I felt just very subdued and I felt zero desire to plan, to create content for my business, to do anything for my business. And I had to come to terms with that was okay. It was like, this is okay, right? Like, is this okay? <laughs> and... It was good. A lot of people ask me, like, how do you do what you do? How do you produce so many different offerings and manage all the things that you do with your kids and your family? And I will tell you this. This is just me personally. I do better in cycles and seasons. So I will have a big season of productivity and then a season of rest, and then a big season of productivity and a season of rest. I was actually just reading somebody's Instagram and they were talking about how they like to follow the European style with something like they said five weeks of work and then one week off, five works of week, uh, weeks of work and then one week off. I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of feels like what I do. So I then decided that it was okay. You know, it was like, this is all part of it. This is the cycle. I just need this downtime. And I, I kind of got in that and I I don't know how many of you do this, but like when you get in that zero motivation to do certain things you've always felt motivated to do or you felt motivated to do normally and you're like, is it going to come back? <gasps> what if it doesn't come back? And you get in a little bit of that fear mode where you're worried. Like you were so passionate 
a week ago and then this week it's like it's gone it's completely gone and so I was a little bit worried like I had I had zero ideas were coming for to, to me I usually am getting pinged all the time I was like nothing 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 sometimes people come and they're like my guides have been quiet I'm like they're giving you a break they're giving you a break just trust you don't need they don't need to be yapping in your ear all the time like go listen to the trees go listen to the flowers go listen to the sun don't freak out if your guides have been silent to you they will come when they need to come as long as you are open and willing so that's where I landed and then as you know as the time went by after a few days it started to come back and now I'm here creating this podcast ta-da here checking in with all of you on the other side of that just to share that experience so that's kind of the ascension symptoms piece that I wanted to talk about today there's a second part of this podcast episode that is coming also from a personal story I actually shared this with my I think it was my cosmic channeling circle I do a live cosmic channeling circle and a live light language circle in person in Los Angeles and I do those once a month so I had just done one yesterday and I shared this story with them and I said a day ago it was really really interesting and I said I think there's more timeline collapsing happening because here's what I went through and I wondered if anybody had also felt something similar I had taken a moment of like contemplation really sort of a ceremonial moment to transition myself fully into my new home and I was very much tuned in and tapped in and connected in and I closed my eyes and all of a sudden I became aware of a lot of multidimensional aspects of myself and some of you know that I sort of downloaded a modality called multidimensional soul integration, which I now teach and certify practitioners in, and I could feel it's something similar to that, but it wasn't exactly that. So I just kind of let it flow in, and all of a sudden, I got this information through my intuitive channels that I was integrating, that there was like a timeline collapsing happening. And I felt like I was specifically calling in all of my lives that had splintered off after 18 years old. So I explained this to my group in Los Angeles as I was telling the story. I said, you know how when you're 18, you have a lot of decisions to make and you could go a lot of different ways. And it's a very important point in your life because depending on what decision you choose, it can completely change the trajectory of your life. Well, technically, I mean, I believe this is Dolores Cannon that talks about it, um, or Sal Rochelle. I'm trying to remember now. Every time you're presented with a decision, those two actually occur as timelines, but some fade away because less energy is put towards them. And if you watch the show Loki, they talk about the branches. That's exactly what happens. So after, at the age of 18, most of us have a lot of branches of our timeline because we, we, in other alternate realities, parallel realities, we make different decisions. So there's one maybe where you go to college. There's one where you don't go to college. There's one where you go study abroad. And there's another one where you, you know, maybe you have children or whatever it is. That's what I felt. And I was like, all of a sudden, all of those timelines, and they had gone far. Like I had felt, Sometimes I feel like the timelines go for like a while and they fade. So maybe they're like five years and then I can't see beyond that. And the only reason that I know this is because I honestly just like have tuned into the timelines. After how many of you saw um, Multiverse of Madness, the Doctor Strange, the Marvel, that right there is is helping you understand that. So is the new Spider-Man, the latest Spider-Man movie. But it's really fascinating to tune into those. And if you are developing your clairs, you can go visit those. You can remote view, for instance. The Multiverse of Madness is showing you that because Scarlet, it it shows, I think her name is Scarlet Witch. I can't remember. Uh, She is seeing herself in a parallel reality with kids. And that's a whole other thing that she gets upset about. 
but the idea is that you've got all of these realities right that you're that you've lived out so but I felt them all converge and collapse into this one and what I felt was like a surge of energy and a surge of intention flowing into this one unified timeline and I knew it was really really significant well the funny thing was is at the gathering somebody had just experienced something similar the day before so I know this is something to watch for for the collective in particular regarding soul aspects and parallel timelines for this 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 time part of your life how do I say that the current life you're in not like any galactic lives or any lives like that were a long time ago I'm talking about right now 2024 like maybe you were born and then you know right now you could have like 20 30 however many parallel lives right now so can, like bringing those and collapsing them and merging those timelines is really significant right now I actually do not know why I have an idea why that I said a second ago which is it gives you that energy back and it talks about that in Loki where when they trim the branches they are um, not siphoning that energy off of those the main timeline well I downloaded a few months ago rather than cut the branches off you merge well you reweave the branches in to the current predominant golden timeline so we're merging all of those splinter timelines into the golden timeline in which we find ourselves that was a pretty incredible experience and I wasn't planning it it just came I was literally outside at the pool with my kids and I had I'd, like I said I'd gone into a little bit of a meditation I can meditate honestly anywhere <laughs> anywhere anytime it can be loud I can tune in anywhere anytime it's just what I've had to learn how to do so you do not have to be in complete silence in order to meditate in fact we are learning how to be tuned into our intuition at any moment it doesn't matter where we are we don't we can calibrate very quickly if that makes sense we can calibrate our antennas and tune in those antennas rapidly anywhere we are so that's the story of my timeline collapsing around my 18 year old self that then wove into this one and we're going to see where it goes we're going to see where it goes so that's again my energy update for mid-june ish I'm really excited. I have some fun things coming up this month. I have two gatherings. One of them is New Earth Activating New Earth Prosperity Codes. Literally an activation of New Earth Prosperity Codes with my friend Ashtara Ren. That one is going to take place on the 22nd of June. You can check out the link below. The other one that's going to be really, really fun just takes place a couple days before. That's my Solstice Activation. So I will be co-creating with my friend Malvina who is in Singapore and we are doing a golden solar dragon solstice activation with Star Mothers Worldwide. So again, you can find out about that below. Now I have some other things. Don't go because those of you who've been hearing me talk about it, I do have some of my links ready for my New York events for 7-7 Portal. The 7-7 Portal is going to be here before we know it. I know it's a little less than a month away. The Syrian gateway is very powerful. I feel Syrian codes coming in through Sirius C which is a higher frequency version of like the Sirius star system it is an etheric plane that vibrates where like you can't see it with the telescope even though you can see Sirius A and Sirius B that will happen um, at 7 a.m pacific on 7 7 as a virtual offering but I'm also going to be gathering in person with a small group in Manhattan of lucky people and we will be co-creating in person there as well as a few one-on-one -on -one spots on 7-7 in Manhattan. And then in addition to that, I'll be doing some grid work in Central Park. So again, some of those links are below. I'll also be doing sessions at the Shungite Room. Oh my goodness, my friends, the Shungite Room, literally the walls, the floor is Shungite, which is an incredibly powerful stone. And it is located in Connecticut in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and I go there at least twice a year, if not more, because I can do initiations and activations in that space in a really intense way that I normally can't do in other places, except for my cosmic sanctuary. And so if you are really feeling like it's time, 
this may be for you. I feel like for this group, it's going to be a lot of multidimensional soul integration. And in fact, that's kind of what I feel like I want to make the theme. So that will happen on the 8th and 9th of July. And then I have a light language workshop in Connecticut. So if you are looking to expand your light language abilities and learn a little bit more about the language of light, spoken, written, hands, that's taking place on the evening of July 9th in Connecticut as well. One last thing I'm doing, and I spoke about this in the last podcast episode, I think, I am now going to be doing grid work at the capital of the United States of America in Washington, D.C. If you feel drawn to do grid work with me at the Washington Monument, and we're going to be kind of in that area with my little starseed, who literally was the one that guided me there the other day, he's like, you know that really, that monument in Washington, D.C., and I think he's seen it on TV. I'm like, um, he's like, it's Abraham Lincoln. And I go, oh, he's sitting there and it's a guy like made out of stone. And he's like, no, 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 no. It's the tall, skinny one. And I said, oh, that's the Washington Monument. And immediately my guide said, he knows that's an important place to do grid work. And so I felt drawn to bring him with me. So we will be there in, uh, that will be later on that week of the 7-7 seven, seven portal. So you can, again, check out the links below. So much fun opportunity, so many fun opportunities coming up, I should say. And you can tell I'm excited. I can't even get it out. I'm just like, I always love co-creating with all of you. My friends, it is such an honor to be with you, to be co-creating this ascension process together with you. Please drop in the comment section, share with us what you're feeling around the topics I mentioned, ascension symptoms, and this timeline convergence and collapsing. There are other people who are listening to this podcast who want to hear what you have to say. Now, if you want to co-create in a more live way, come into our Starseed Gridwork community as well. That is a monthly membership where you get to attend three gatherings and I bring in lots of messages, always updating about the energies and the planetary gridwork. For Gaia along with my team. I have an incredible team of intuitive grid workers as well. All right, take a nice deep breath. I'm going to do a little light language just to help support you. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. I am sending you so much love. And I am reminding you that I am you, and you are me, and we are we. Until next time, my friends. <laughs>